Visit Amtrak.com for details. Spalding, true to the game. We have a brand new score here at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C. There you see it, 42 to 12. The Bison have just scored to cut the deficit down to 30 on Norfolk State. Tony, have you been a part of a huge comeback in the second half? Yes, I have. One for, one against. And I remember we played Houston one time. We went in at halftime. We had them down 26 to 7, and we end up losing that game. I think it was uh, 29 or 30 or something like that. The Dallas Cowboys did it like that one time. Nothing's impossible, but really right now what you want to do at this stage of the season, you want to see what players are going to stand up and continue to play. You want to try to improve on the things that hurt you. As I say, you take away those special teams plays and that turnover, and this is a tight game right now. So the Bison will kick it off. And third quarter score, I want to pass on to you real quick. South Carolina State leading Delaware State 23-3. The Bulldogs undefeated in mid East Athletic Conference play. As there's an onside kick by Patrick Wolf, and he recovered it. Let's see if it went the required 10 yards, and the referee said it did. Yes, it did, and we've seen them operate and do this before, and that's a very good play at this point in time. That tells me right there that Coach Bailey is not going to allow this team to quit. Nice little kick here, this hitter. All the people have dropped back from North Carolina State. They run 10 yards, blockers there. He stops and pick it up. Excellent play. The third time this year that the Bison have executed and recovered an onside kick. Now let's add and delete. They've had four Special team miscues. Now we give them one on the good ledger. Okay, so they have their three. So we'll take one away. No, we want three more good plays is what I'm saying. All right, let's <laughs> see if they go back up top again. Here's Hagler. The last pass he threw was a 48-yard touchdown to Brandon Sherman. Now he's back again to pass. Looking deep again. Has Hood out there. Hood makes the reception down to the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the Norfolk State six-yard line. I tell you, it was excellent. You know what? I like that, the way they put it. Hagler back in there, giving him the protection, let him step. And I keep telling you, let him go back to seven, step up to five. He's a whole different quarterback. He stood in there, and he's had two excellent throws. Plus, they found a pigeon. He step up. You see him step up, too. Nice throw. Hood is out there. Great catch. And they got a pigeon over there in 27. I don't know his name. I should not call him that. But at the same time, they go at him twice. Nice throw. And what they're doing is stopping and going on him. He's biting. He can't cover these guys. So you know what? You ride that horse until it can't run anymore. Don Carey, the, the defender for the Spartans, says that was a 49-yard reception from Florida Hagler to Orlando Hood. First down and goal to make it first and 10 for the Bison at the 11-yard line. They spot it. And now there's a timeout being called, and that might be a timeout that they want later on because Howard had to call that timeout. I do not like that. Maybe the clock was running down or whatever, but you know what? You're trying to mount a comeback. In the fourth quarter, you need every timeout you can get. We've seen games that they've lost this year because they did not have those timeouts. So therefore, this is important. But at the same time as being the leader, Hagler probably figured we need this six. Notice I said six, I'm not saying seven. We need this six right now to get back in the game. Now, the Spartans have been, you know, susceptible to the big play all season. Now, the Bison, they're going after the top corners on, on each play, and that's Don Carey. He's a top corner in the MEAC. Yeah, he's, you said a, he was top a, pigeon, he's well, a top corner. Well, you know corner. what? I saw them work him twice. I've seen him. He came in with 26 tackles, five pass breakups, which is not a lot. So, yes, he, I, I'm not calling him a pigeon for life. He just a pigeon for those plays, and you know what? They found something. All right, quickly before we resume play, let's go down to Susan Stark on the sideline. Susan. 
Hi, we have Camille and Henry from America's Promise. Can you tell us a little bit more about your organization and what's the focus? Okay, well, America's Promise is a Saturday morning mentoring program. It's not so much academic tutoring as it is like Big Brother, Big Sister. So it's one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and we focus on making a more personal, positive impact in the community, not just like feeding the homeless once a month, but it's every Saturday, and it goes um, all year long. And like I said, it's one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So we do different things like feeding the homeless, doing academic games on Howard's campus, um, playing. Why are organizations like this so important? Well, they're important to me because I feel the reason why I'm so blessed is because the, <laughs> the, re the purpose is to reach back to your community. The reason why we're all at Howard, I feel, is to give back to our community, which Great. is exactly why. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Back to you guys, Tony and Ty. Well, thank you, Susan, and no thank you, say the Howard Bison, who are turned away on the play that developed during the interview, you saw where Terrell Whitehead picked off that fade pass from Floyd Hagler. There's Whitehead right there. And Howard in, in the bottom three in red zone conversion in the NBAC. And that was another indication that they don't do well from the 20 yard line on in. Inexcusable. You can't allow to get down there. And every time it seems though they get momentum, they do something to stop it. And D'Angelo Branch on the carry that time. And he gets outside to about the 16-yard line. And I think the, more so than that interception, Tony, the big momentum breaker was the timeout. Yeah, they just hit that big 49-yard play, and that was a timeout. And, you know, we've, Indoor Cooper is one good thing that we need to make mention. He's been in the last two series. I saw him go in, and that's, that's important for this defense. But at the same time, as you said, that timeout, that just messed up their whole flow, took away, and then they make a mistake. First and five for Norfolk State, and they run the ball again over left tackle. And, and not to harp on that, but, you know, you had momentum flowing there, a, a big pass and catch from Hood, from, from uh, Hagler to Hood. And you go down and you line up and you let the play clock run down. You're forced to call a timeout. Oh, yeah. And, you know, let's not be just one-sided on this. Norfolk is taking advantage of every opportunity they've been given by the Bison. So what we have to look at is they're giving them the opportunity. And this, dissecting this game, we also must be cognizant of the fact that they are giving them these opportunities. They are making mistakes. They are calling wrong timeouts. The special team is playing bad. Had they scored then, this would be a ball game. Instead... It's a third down and three for Norfolk State, and they pick it up as Dennis Brown hits his wide receiver out there. And he takes it for a first down. That is Jamar Johnson on the reception. You see, that's what happens when you have a quarterback that can run and they're very mobile. He can make plays happen and make get a release from a receiver that was formerly covered. But by him being able to run, you must pay attention to him. So now first down and 10, the Spartans have the ball up to the 25-yard line. We have 5-16 left in the third quarter. Howard trails Norfolk State 42 to 30. Bison need a big play on defense. Norfolk State comes out. Five receivers in the set. Man goes in motion, inside handoff. And he takes it and cuts it back. And on that reception was number six, P.J. Hayden, the wide receiver from Fredericksburg, Virginia. And one thing you're saying is very, very true. They need a play. They need to make a play. They need to stop this momentum. They need to get a turnover. And sometimes you depend on your defense to do that. And that's what they need right now. Even though the defense have played fairly well, they haven't gotten a turnover. Look at the other side of the ledger. Norfolk has gotten turnovers and turned them in, taking away points and giving their offense points. Second down and two for the Spartans. Ball spotted at their own 33. Brown, the quarterback, in shotgun formation. Howard with a 4-3 defense showing blitz. Here's the snap. Inside handoff to Branch. Branch trying to get to the outside. Gets to the corner. And gets close to a first down over to about the 36-yard line. Indoor Cooper played that very well. But you can see he had to hurt shoulder. And what happened was he shot the gap and made a nice play. Made the man miss. And then he went over and he tried to reach for him. But he could only get his arm out so far. Is that because of the stinger? Yes. Now, you can watch him as he gets through here. Nice move. And he see he didn't okay. bring that left that left arm up to the last moment because, you know, that's the hurt arm. Normally on that play, he would have cupped that guy in the backfield. First down, 10, Spartans. Ball at the 35. Norfolk State taking his time. Working that play clock down. 10 seconds on the play clock. Now, now a handoff. 
Inside handoff to Hedgeman. And to Keene, takes it over the 35 to about the 38. And let's again go down to Susan Stark on the sideline and tell us more about why indoors back in the game. Susan. Howard can use all the help they can get, and senior defensive player number 45, Endor Cooper, is back in the field after being sidelined for a left shoulder stinger. It's important for him to play since NFL scouts from Minnesota Vikings, Tennessee Titans, and Atlanta Falcons are in the stands. Tony Ty, back to you. Okay. Good reason to be out there on the field, Tony? Yeah, and you know, and one thing we got to always be aware of, he's a leader, he's a player, and he's a guy that bleeds for this team, and he's bled all year, and he's been a very good player. So you do not, if he can get out there, and no matter how effective his arm can be, he will be out there making plays because that's the pedigree that he is. And you have to show the scouts, too, that you can play with a little pain or some pain. Exactly. You have to do that. And I did not want to make mention of that because that will help him in the long run because that's what you want to see. When you're on the next level, it doesn't matter. You look at it with 52 tackles and everything. He is a great player now, but they want to see what can you do on the next level. Will you play hurt? Can you cover running backs? Okay, you got a penalty right there. Can Will you go in when it's not good? going well for your team. Well, the penalty will push the Spartans back and make a third down and 11 if it is on Norfolk State. Yes, it's, it is. He, he got jumped well before it was time for him to move. 2.33 left here in the third quarter. Norfolk State leading 42 to 12, trying to break a five game losing streak. They have not beaten Howard here at Green Stadium since 1983. You know what's disturbing about this, though? You look at this, and I hate to keep harping on the mistakes, but Take those out. This is a very good game. And well, we still have a quarter left. So they still haven't beat them there in a while. Third down 11 for the Spartans. Back at the 35. Brown. Quick step. Quick pass to Dario Walker. Walker running room midfield and tripped up at the 45-yard line. Walker got inside that Howard defense and was on his way to the end zone, but got tripped up at the 45. And there's an injured player, an injured bison on the field down there. You take a look at it. He's got a nice little throw. Throw it to the middle. Get to the middle of the field. No one there to really get him. Number 43 comes up at the last moment, but he picked up. And that's Robert Parker. Haven't called his name. Uh, the junior from Tampa, Florida. Haven't called his name, but he made a play downfield. And he, he's a pretty good player. But at the same time, that was just a very good play. And what it was was a middle screen. And they let the lineman get out there. And he come behind him, throw it to him. And he already has blocks. And with an injury on the field, we'll take a timeout. The score, 42-12, Norfolk State leads. Howard back in moments on HBCU Sports. churches, we believe that greatness begins with passion and commitment. We proudly support the students and communities of historically black colleges and universities. Churches. Visit Amtrak.com for details. 
And we're late here in the third quarter at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C., where the Howard Bison trail Norfolk State 42-12. Robert Parker, the injured Bison, got up under his own power. is off on the field being looked at on the sideline by the training staff of the Bison. And we do expect to see him back in the game possibly. Well, he caught the gentleman from behind, and he fell down, and his shoulder kind of made an impact into the grass. And I tell you, that's why they're rubbing that shoulder right now. You get your shoulders jammed like that. Football is a very violent game. Uh, it is the kind of game you can get hurt on a, any given play. What I have seen, and, you know, that tells you one thing, just like we said with Indoor Cooper coming back in, this young man will be back too because he's a player. And he, he's not having the greatest year that he's had, but as you can see, that shoulder right there, that's what's bothering him. When he came down, that shoulder was jammed into the turf. And when you jam it like that, you have a great injury, a great opportunity to have a rotator cup injury. I know I wouldn't be back. Third down and make it first and <laughs> ten for Norfolk State. Here's a swing pass out there to the wide receiver who catches it and gets down to the 40-yard line. That's number 16, Daryl Dickerson on the return. One thing, rather. one thing Howard has identified, if you get pressure on Dennis Brown, he will throw it. Now, the last couple of plays, they've gotten pressure. The receivers have made good catches. But at the same time, continue to do what you're doing because he, he will throw a couple to you. So, nice pickup on uh, first down. Brings up a second down, a long six for the Spartans with 149 left in the third quarter. Long third quarter because we've seen a lot of passing. Yes. Dennis Brown in shotgun formation. Four receivers for the Spartans. Quick pass out there again. Same play. Jamar Johnson. Gets a first down for the Spartans. But see, now that is the problem. And if you take a look at it, that is the problem. When you blitz, wherever a good, any good quarterback, wherever you blitz and the player leaves that area, they will throw it where that player left. But see what happened? Indoor left that area. So what they do? They threw it to a right, a receiver right where he came from. So first and 10 for Norfolk State. Ball down to the Howard 30 yard line. Brown again is shotgun formation. They've stuck with this all afternoon. Inside handoff to D'Angelo Branch. And Branch breaks containment. Branch down inside the 15 to about the 11 yard line. Gain of 19 for D'Angelo Branch. Now I can accept something, but now you don't do this. This is just a flat out run, man on man. All of the bites will get turned inside and the, the cornerback gets cut down. He makes a nice cut and he picks up 10 yards like it's nothing. What you have to do there, those defensive linemen, they got to use their hands. You got to get somebody outside. Every time they get a big run today, containment comes into play. First down and 10, and here's Branch again. Runs it up inside. He's going to be tackled after a gain of about one. And I guess you can say right now, Norfolk State is enforcing its will on the Howard Bison defense. Yes, they are, because they could see that had they got that last score and it was 42 to 18 to 19, that this would have been a different game. Right now, what they're trying to do is try to erase any thoughts that they think Howard may have a win in this game, and they think they can do that by scoring. Total passing yards this afternoon, Norfolk State 150. Howard has 80. But right now, the Spartans are doing it on the ground. Here's another run by Branch. Branch just breaking tackles, gets down to about the five-yard line. You got to take that on at the point of attack a little more. Howard was right there. They had a defensive back right there. But he also did not close the hole enough. You got to close the hole down. You got to contain. You got to play the rudiments of the defense. Pick up a five for Norfolk State, and we will take it to the other end because the third quarter has expired. So with the score, Norfolk State 42, Howard 12 will return after this timeout on HBCU Sports.
happens in your world. Spend some time in ours. Greatness begins with passion and commitment. We proudly support the students and communities of historically black colleges and universities. Churches. And we're back here at Howard University for the start of the fourth quarter with the Bison trailing in Norfolk State, 42 to 12. Ty Miller and Tony McGee here on HBCU Sports. This drive is into its seventh minute. Norfolk State has, has had the ball for 12 plays. When play resumes, they'll be in their 13th play of this drive, Tony. So they are enforcing their will. Enforcing their will, but the most important thing is how did the drive start? With a turnover. A turnover that was going in to really put this game closer and allow them now to keep the ball this amount of time. So here come the Spartans with a third down and four. As you look at the rushing and passing yards for this afternoon, we'll get back to that in a second. But here's a score or a run to the end zone, and that is D'Angelo Branch just really just forcing his will over the goal line and into the end zone to make it a 48 to 12 score for Norfolk State on top. And it's unfortunate. People will look at this score and say, oh, they just really ran over Howard. But if you just go back and think about the thing that had transpired in this game, now. Howard seems to have given up somewhat. Maybe not, but you don't you do not allow him. You gotta play each and every play to the end. Pass it out on the PAT, puts it up and puts it through the uprights. So early here in the fourth quarter, you see it there. It's now a 49 to 12 ball game. Norfolk State on top of Howard. Well, this is evaluation time for the coaches, for the head coach and everyone. They need to sit back. And this is when you start evaluating. As you look at this, this is man on man, straight blocking. Give it to him in the four hole, which is between the guard and, and, and the center. And you have no one there, not a linebacker, not a defensive tackle or nothing. And we'll take a break and come back with more this time out on HBC Sports. from Spalding, true to the game. Fourth quarter action here in Washington, D.C., where the Norfolk State Spartans jubilant, happy on the sideline right now because they lead it 49 to 12. D'Angelo Branch just took it in four yards out for the score for the Spartans. There you see the Norfolk State marching band whooping it up here as he now gets set to kick out to the Bison. Tony, as we go into the final 14 minutes and 57 seconds of this game, if you coach Carey bailing your team down by a huge margin, what is your focus and what do you do offensively? Well, offensively, I go back to what I can do, which we know they will pass the ball now. 
But my other focus is on to see the reaction of my players and, as I said prior to the break, evaluate these players, see who's giving up, see who's going to continue to play, see who's just out there just putting time in and who's really trying to still do something about the score of this game. And for the Spartans and Coach Pete Adrian, he wants to see his players continue to pour it on, right? As he want to he want to pour it on, but he doesn't want them to make enough mistakes to let Howard even think they're back in the game. As you'll notice at the end of the second quarter, beginning of the third, he was a little nervous, but they made a couple of plays to make it happen. Fair catch by the Bison, who will take it over first and 10 at their own 33-yard line. A fair catch by... Carnegie Toronto, a tight end and a freshman from Largo, Maryland. He's caught the last three, so they're kicking it to him. At least he's making the catch, so that's a positive thing. But what they're doing is keeping it out of the hands of the returner, of the returner because they feel like P.J. Hayden, to make quick sixes, they call it, will make it happen. So the Bison take over first and 10 at their own 33. Hagler back to pass. Hagler pressured and dropped. Behind the line of scrimmage, big number 95 breaking through for the Spartans that time. And that was Ray Jennings, a six foot, 305 pound junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. And if you look at that, Hagler was still looking over the defense when the ball was snapped to him. He did an excellent, see that he did an excellent job just to catch the ball. I don't know what the center was going on. He was on his own snap. He snapped it, but Hagler was still looking at over the defense. And Sean Wolford, the center, has not had the best of games this afternoon. I did not want to say that, you know, I, I, because I I'm, not going, one, but I'm not one to point fingers, but I will get you to do that, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 16, and we have a timeout on the field called by Norfolk State. And there's Coach Kerry Bailey looking like, what's going on here? Why are they calling a timeout? And Coach Kerry Bailey has – he has some work to do with this Howard team. There are some talented players here at Howard. Yeah, and, you know, I, 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 it would be interesting to me to find out because from last year when he first came to now, I've seen a kind of a change in his to what I see him doing. And I would wonder if that's because he does not have the complement of players that he needs to accomplish what he wants to. If you remember last year when he came in, he was running. I mean, if you think Whitaker had a great year and right. they had some tough running backs, quarterback was the kind that he made plays when things happened. The defense was anchored and they was coming and blitzing. This year I noticed a kind of, I don't know if he, are these players, have given him enough trust offensively and defensively to do that other than indoor Cooper. It's, it's a team that's not on the attack, always seem to be on the defensive. Exactly, and I don't think that's because of coaching either. I think that's the players. Second down and 16, Hagler being chased. He's on the defensive and will throw it out of bounds as he was being chased by Deion Norris, a 6'4 junior and a nose tackle for a defensive tackle, rather, for the Spartans. And we say he's active, but they're not. You know, you look at what these guys came in, and, and Dennis Marsh, as you see, that's pressure right there. Who was blocking him? Hagler, you can't blame that on him. He's doing all he could. But Dennis Marsh was the only defensive lineman that came in with some kind of stat. He had 35 tackles and really two or three for losses. Then G Jennings only had 10 solos and 12 assists. And Harris only had 16 tackles. Now they come in here and look like Dexter Manley and Charles Mann. Third down, 16 for Howard. Hagler back to pass. Throws it out there. And the ball is caught for a first down. As making a nice adjustment with Daley Gunter, number 80. Very nice play by the young man. And that was the same kind of route that Norfolk's been really trying. And what you do is you get out there, Hagler looks him off. He throw it where he throw it where only the offensive man can adjust his body and catch the ball towards the sideline. Great play. And for all of you fans, I forgot how old I am. Dexter Man and Charles Mann are a little older Redskins. But that was just a great play by that young man. And the thing about it, Hagler threw it where only he could get it. 18 yard pass and catch, first down for the Bison at the 45. Hagger in the middle, has it picked off. Picked off by number 34, who has one reception for a touchdown. That is Corwin Hammond, his second interception this afternoon. Okay, let's take a look at it. number 34. What is he reading? Why is he getting a jump on the ball? Why does it look like we got a completion for the Bison and he gets an interception? What do you think it is, Ty, when we see the read? Look at his eyes. Nowhere. He looked off very little, threw it right there. He looked at him in the beginning. 34 is just reading his eyes. And we mentioned earlier that the referees are using pink flags for breast cancer awareness, mm -hmm. normally yellow flags. Well, now the bison might want to throw the white flags. 
I'm not going there, Ty. That, that, that was very brutal, young man. Uh, Just an assessment. When you were out there at the hot spa in, in Miami, did you think of that? Uh, you know why we were here working like dogs? Is that, you thought of that white flag thing? <laughs> well, first down and 10 for Norfolk State. Just poking a little fun. I mean, trying to keep it, you know, well, right with, here. Uh, you, you are, but you know what, Coach Bailey's not because he's looking at that 13-25. And I tell you, it's evaluation time now, but that quarter, that what Hagler needs to do, and someone needs to sit him down and look at this film and then go back over his film of game in and game out and say, what are you doing, young man, that you see? And I can pick up to it. On your three-step drops, you're throwing it in the ground and you're throwing it high. On your other drops, on your seven drops, and you come up five, you're doing a good job. But on all of them, you're eyeballing your man, and you must stop doing that. Dexter Merritt in a quarterback for Norfolk State now. Merritt hands off to his running back, and Merritt spelling Dennis Brown, who had a decent day. Merritt is a 6'2 ratio freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. And see what you're starting to do now, Howard is getting up slow. Norfolk, no, we, we forced our will. We're running the ball. We got things happening. More and more of them are becoming injured. You got people in there now that haven't played in a while. Indoor tried to come back in, but you know that he, he can only do so much with a hurt shoulder. That defensive lineman have taken a big hit. But you know, one person that we haven't mentioned, and that's Will Corner. He is really by on the roster, he's a fullback, 6'2", 245. But I've seen him go in there, and he plays that defensive end pretty well to be a really fullback. And he's in there right now on the defensive line. Third down and three, low snap. Brandon Cameron on the carry from Norfolk State, trying to get to the outside, but he won't get there as Howard's defense will knock him down short of the first down marker and for a two-yard loss. And I like to see that because you know what? They haven't given up totally. And the defense, and we say they'll look at the score and feel like the defense has been scored on quite a bit, but no, it hasn't. It's been turnover. It's been special teams play. Saki Kirkula made the tackle for the Bison that time. And now fourth down and three for Norfolk State. And they're at the point of the field where I guess there's no sense in punting. So Coach Adrian's called him over to the sideline and talked to him about what they want to do in this fourth down. Mm -hmm. Even though with the lead being what it is, why not punt the ball? Well, they feel like if they punt it, and, and you look where the ball is located now, and if they punt it uh, and the ball goes out of bounds, then they'll have it back on the 20. So you really only gain about 18 yards. So they take the penalty, yes. let the clock run down for a delay of game to put it back five yards and right. the ball. And, and Tony, at the top of the show, I told you it was a Norfolk State team that came in two and six. But Coach Adrian told me during the week that Coach Taylor, when he lost to the Florida a &M last week, 31-28, after the game, Coach Taylor told him, I know your team could easily be six and two. Mm. I mean, it's just not a it's – a, it's a decent, improving Norfolk State team. I, I agree with you to a point, but also I had to look at the digression of the Howard team and see where they made their mistake and why they gave away a lot of points. And then I, then when I look at that, I say, no, this team needs to be what they were, two, uh, two and six. <laughs> Billy Rudd punts it down inside the 10-yard uh, line. Norfolk State uh, make it – just outside the 10 at the 11 yard line and Howard has regressed over the past couple of weeks somewhat and and now injuries will cause them to digress even more yeah and regress see, more. yeah regress it a little bit and that you never know what that may be due to the regression may be due to injuries it may be due to the play calling and that may be as a result of the injuries so uh, you have to sit down and look at the whole season and then you can kind of figure out what happened First and 10, Hagler still at quarterback, sends a man in motion, takes a snap, throws it out there, has a man open, and that's going to be Hood up to about the 22. And right now, let's go down to Susan on the sideline. Susan Stark, what do you have for us? We have Terry White from Tau Beta Sigma. Can you let us know a little bit about your sorority and what makes today special for you guys? Well, Tau Beta Sigma is a national honorary band sorority. We basically provide support and service to collegiate band programs. And today is special for us because we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year and we're having our Sisters Day at the game. How are you guys nationally recognized? I heard some good news. <laughs> well, our chapter, Ada Delta at Howard, is very well nationally recognized. We've won top chapter several times. We've won a lot of awards and we've contributed to the national sorority regalia. So we're really highly praised and prized chapter. That's really nice. Tony, Ty, back to you guys. Okay, Susan. And 
Back on the field, it's a second down and four for the Bison. Ball spotted up at the 31-yard line. Ten minutes, 11 seconds left in this game. They trail Norfolk State 49-12. Hagler back to pass. Sets up, has a man out there. And it is Gunter, Daly Gunter, for a first down up to the 43. Like that play, like the way he stood up, brought the receiver inside, and the offensive line did a pretty good job holding him off and Hadley gave him a chance to look down there and give the, the receiver opportunity to get down for a 10-yard gain, pick up the first down. 9.52, 9.51 left in the fourth quarter. You may not can win the game, but you can make a little noise. And it's going to be a short week for these Bison right now who are on the way to another loss. They will head down to Orangeburg to take on South Carolina State. Mm, that's, that will be a very tough game. Flag out there, so you know it's offensively because they did not allow them. It's offensive penalty because they did not allow them to continue to play. And South Carolina State, at last check, was leading. Dead ball, part of the snap. Illegal snap, number 77, offense. Five yards, remain second down. They were leading Delaware State 23-3. That game was in the third quarter. Norfolk State will take on Morgan State next week, and that game could mean a whole lot because coming into this afternoon's action, Morgan State was only one down or one down in the loss column in the MEAC race. They're taking on Florida A&M at 6 p.m. down in Tallahassee this evening. Mm. Back here, first down 15 for the Bison. 9.20 left in this game. And again, a stoppage in play. Referee's getting kind of whistle happy here late, Tony, in the game. Mm, yes, I, I don't know what that one was about. The last one, as we said, was against the Bison. But I think maybe they were adjusting the clock. Hood in motion, turned up field, but no flag. Hagger, all kinds of time. Hood's out there, picked off, but broken up by... Two Norfolk State defenders as Terrell Whitehead had a bead on the ball for the interception, but his teammate unfortunately banged into him, Ricardo Volchin, and knocked it incomplete. And the only problem like that, Hood was running wide open once again, and I just don't see what's happening here. But more and more, I am really, really just looking at how they're beating this offense, and that's by reading the quarterback's eyes. How does a quarterback overcome what you've been talking about all afternoon and Repetition. learn to look off his... Repetition. Defenders. Repetition. This is his first full year playing, and you expect that. Now, I can see this on all levels, not just high, uh, not just uh, pros, but you, I mean uh, college. You also see it in the pros, and that's what they talk about in the pros. When you see the game, they say he need to look off to safety. Norfolk State calls a timeout, so with 8.55 left, 49-12, the Spartans over the Bison. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on HBCU Sports. Greatness begins with passion and commitment. We proudly support the students and communities of historically black colleges and universities. Churches. Back here in Washington, D.C. on this Saturday afternoon, the first day of November, Norfolk State 49, Howard 12. An update from Dover, Delaware, where they are late in the fourth quarter with two minutes and 15 seconds left. South Carolina State hanging on over the Hornets. They lead 23-17 again, about two minutes and 15 seconds 
left in that game. Oh, well, that's that's a big one. I mean, just a six-point spread right there. Anything can happen with two minutes left. And we know Delaware has had the propensity in the last few years to make big plays right at the end. So and there, now, there's our scholastic player of the game, Don Carey. Yes, I tell you, he's made plays. And our next scholastic player from Howard University, that's Patrick Wolf, the punter today. GPA 3.8. Uh, he majors in international business, young man from Germany, only a sophomore. And handling all kicking chores because of injuries on this Howard team. And injuries seem to snowball when it, once they get control of a team. And that's what's happened to the Bison. Well, as I said, sometimes the individuals that are coming in to replace the injured players aren't prepared to really do the job. And I think that's what has transpired on this team. I think the people that's come in to replace injured players haven't been as good or as well prepared as the players that were hurt. 8.55 left here in the fourth quarter. Second down and 15 for Howard. Hagler back in shotgun formation. Howard with five receivers in the set. Hagler looking, looking, throws it out to Hood. One-handed catch, but cannot bring it down. Good effort by Orlando's Hood. Ball just a little bit behind him. And a little bit hard and high. I guess they call that high outside, right? High hard one, right? That's what I'm talking about. And that's what he threw it. He threw it kind of hard. You see, Hood tried to bring it down. Even, even if he had brought it down, you're only looking at a two-yard gain there. Or a fumble. I think Hood would have held on to it. So third down and 15 now. And a hacker again in shotgun formation. Norfolk State just laying back on defense. Playing man-to-man -man defense right now. Hagler chased out of the pocket. Has running room, but throws it out there and hits his man, Gonter. A check that. Make that number 85 on the reception for the Bison. Kenneth Johnson. I'm sorry, Todd Hughes is on the reception mm -hmm. as he was chased out. 10-yard pickup, but another punting situation for Patrick Wolf and the Bison. Patrick Wolf has gotten a lot of work on this punting today, but I tell you what, overall, I think he's done a very good job. Look at this. Nice little play. He probably could have picked up a yard if he ran it, but he got it out there to Hughes. Hughes made a nice little catch, but at the same time, it was not enough for the first down. Matter of fact, it came up about six yards short. Dwight Flukeberry back as he fumbles the snap, and he's going to be chasing, kicks it sideways. And that sideways soccer style kicking helped him that time because normally a kicker would not, a punter would not get that kick off. Oh, I tell you, and that was very, I'm going to tell you what, I, people may not realize that was a very good play by that young man because even though he did fumble the, the uh, snap, he was able to make a play. I mean, had he not made that play, then Norfolk would have taken the ball over down deep into Bison territory. Kick it like a soccer player that time. Exactly. So Norfolk State takes over. New quarterback in the game for Pete Adrian's team, who are going to move to three and six on the season. Dexter Merritt, a freshman from Chesapeake's in the game, spelling Dennis Brown. Merritt, shotgun formation. And inside handoff. And the running back is number 37 in the game now. That's Brandon Cameron. Cameron takes it over left tackle for a few yards. And all they're doing is running that same play. And what they're doing is trying to run outside, get on the edges. And they're doing that because they're able to block Howard's defensive lineman down, linebacker down, and letting the running back make a cut. They've been running that all day. And that play is, is, is scheme where it will go between right outside of the tight end and before the safety or linebacker can get up. It's a very easy play, but at the same time, Howard, they really have a defense that play well today. Cameron picked up six, so second down and four for Norfolk State, who take their time as the play clock runs down inside of 10 seconds. Merritt again in shotgun formation. Inside handoff again, and this is going to be Cameron. Cameron stacked up at the line of scrimmage, but surges forward and picks up one, maybe two. It's going to be third down and short. Mm -hmm. So at this point in the game, Norfolk State content to sit on the ball offensively and just play zone defense as you see Indoor Cooper back in the game for the Bison. Yeah, yeah you got to put your hat off, take your hats off to the young man. He could have easily take a taking a rain check for next week or the next three days or whatever, but he came out here. He's still trying to play. Yes, he know that it's scouts you're looking, but that's not the reason that he did that. He's a player. 
Third down and a short two for Norfolk State. Merritt, a quarterback again, a shotgun formation. Takes the handoff. Quick pass out there. And he hits his man for a first down. Donald Alexander, the tight end, 6'6 from Lynchburg, made the reception. Well, I'm sorry you do not have instant replay on this because they're calling this. A, the ball was out and they're calling it a complete pass, but at the same time, I do not think the runner was down for the simple reason. Indoor was under him before the ball the ball came out prior to that, but now they're saying the ball was down, therefore Howard would not get the ball, and they're saying it was a completed pass. So the Spartans keep the clock moving with six minutes and seven seconds left here. And there's a young man who made the reception down on the field. That is, uh, again, Donald Alexander. And we'll take a timeout with the score. Norfolk State 49, Howard 12. We'll be back in moments here on HBCU Sports. for details. And we're back here at Howard University where you see the young man Donald Alexander has been helped off the field. He made one reception. Good for a first down for the Spartans, but he's being checked out by the medical staff. There you see Indoor Cooper who made the tackle. And as you can see right there, he comes down. The young man is not all the way down before the ball comes out, but the official said he was. So therefore, he not only gets the reception, they keep the ball. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Spartans at their own 36. Six minutes and seven seconds left in this ball game. Norfolk State next week again takes on Morgan State as head coach Pete Adrian, who asked him earlier this week, I said, uh, this five-game losing streak, is it an indication that Norfolk State is back to the team they were a few years ago, or is it just something is an aberration? He said it was an aberration because of big plays, because of young players, but he still feels he has this, this program at a high level. And yes, he's played better today, and at the same time, though, I can conceivably see how they would lose five in a row because they really, just man on man, haven't really out just played out played Howard that well. Dexter Merritt hands it off to the running back, and that's Hedgeman on the carry, and Hedgeman gets uh, over the line of scrimmage for about one. Actually, no gain on that carry. And that was number two. Andre Cook, his first carry this afternoon, a senior from Chesapeake, Virginia. But if you look at it now, and then you look at it man on man, but then you look on unit on unit, their offense and defensive line of Norfolk has played pretty well today. They've controlled the line of scrimmage. Running backs that play have ran well. Quarterback have controlled the game. So therefore, overall, as units, they have outplayed Howard that way. But Howard also have turned over the ball, and special teams have been outplayed badly. Second down and 10 for the Spartans. Taking their time, play clock inside of five. They snap it at three. Here's Cook again. Cook gets to a first down, gain of 12. That's what we're referring to, unit on unit. That, now, that was a great individual run, but it all started with that offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. And those young men have played well for Norfolk. And to me, each and every game is won between the line of scrimmage. You win a game either two yards on, on their side or two yards on your side. Whichever you, if you get on their side and penetrate, you can win it defensively. If they get on your side offensively, they win it. Gain of 11 for a first down and 10 for Norfolk State. Ball spotted at the 47-yard line. Clock continues to tick at 4.27 and counting. Merritt again taking the clock down inside five seconds on the play clock. And the handoff to a new running back in the game. This is number 41 as they keep shoveling running backs in and out. That's Donovan Cotton, a sophomore from Hampton, Virginia. 
A lot of Virginia players, homegrown talent on this Norfolk State roster. And that has to bode well for Norfolk State because that means they're working that Tidewater, Hampton Roads area real well in terms of recruiting. As we know, there's a lot of talent down there, a lot of talent that goes to other places in the country. But at the same time, when you as a, as, as a school can go within your state and pick up a lot of great players, say, for instance, Florida does that very well as well as Texas, you then have a breeding ground for great athletes and great players, and you keep them at home. That is the key. you got to keep your good players at home, and Norfolk has done a very good job with that. Second down and eight. Merritt again snaps it. Cotton on the run. Cotton gets to the, to the corners. Breaks containment. Still running and still turning. And you can tell this is a hungry young ball player. Yeah, he wants that time. He wants his opportunity. He wants his name in the record book. <laughs> but as you see, you said broke <laughs> containment. They didn't really break containment. Once again, the defensive lineman did a good job at point of attack. And then you either, when you get a good standoff and you two gap on the guy, when I say two gap, you're right on him where you go either way. You got to make his election. He went inside of the man instead of out. And tell me why we have this time to two days away, two and a half days away, election day. Got to remind everybody to get out and vote. Uh, this is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. And understandably, the lines in pre-election voting have been long. They're going to be long on Tuesday. Be patient, cast your ballot, and may the best or the, or the candidate with the most votes win. Exactly. And, you know, you, don't, you do not worry about the lines when you've got such a situation as we have. You go and stand in line for concerts. You go and stand in line for rides at the carnival. You go and stand in line for, for sales at a store. So, therefore, to vote and have your vote be counted, it doesn't matter how long the line is. You just make sure that you do it. And that, again, it happens on Election Day, which is Tuesday. And that is going to be, what, November the 4th? Yes. I voted six weeks ago. Did you? Yes, I you did. You stand in line? Or you, no. No, no. Just impatient, right? No, I wanted my voice to be heard. <laughs> Second down and nine, two minutes and five seconds here. The Bison again will take on South Carolina State. It's going to be a short week for Coach Kerry Bailey and his staff. Norfolk State working that play clock down, and again they hand it off to the running back, and he – Gets one yard and one minute and 47 seconds on the clock now. Break up a third down and eight. Well, I was looking at 71 when he was going after one of Howard defensive players. When we were players at this time of the game, we say the most dangerous player on the field is one with a clean jersey. <laughs> he haven't been out there all day. He's trying to make a name, and you bet not turn your head on him. One minute and 25 seconds left here. As, as a head coach, what, what do you say when you go into the locker room after taking such a loss? I'm disgusted. I'm looking at you make the same problems in the same plays that you made prior, the same mistakes. My special teams are horrible, and they've been that way, and they need to work to get better. And I'm not saying that they're horrible from a coaching point as much as from an effort point. And you can't allow your special team to dictate a game, and that's transpired over the first last four or five years. And I'm telling my players I'm disgusted that really, if you take away our mistakes, we played with this team. Andre Cook on the carry, number two for Norfolk State. Picked up nine yards. Orlando Jamison made the stop for the Bison. So now fourth down and one with 38 seconds left. And Howard will drop to one and seven on the season. Norfolk State improves to three and six. For Norfolk State, again, we mentioned during the course of the telecast that they haven't won a game here since 1983. Well, that streak is broken. And on a fourth and one, they do an inside handoff and get close to the first down. You realize I was still playing football then. 1983, right? That is a long time ago. <laughs> so they get the first down, and now all they have to do is take a knee, and that's going to be the end of the game. Eight seconds left. No play necessary. So the Howard Bison fall to the Norfolk State Spartans. This is Coach Kerry Bailey going over to shake the hands of head coach Pete Adrian. And Bailey and his staff has to regroup and get ready for the South Carolina State Bulldogs this Thursday while Norfolk State will next week take on 
the hungry Morgan State Bears who have one of the better defenses in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. You can, look, you can look at Coach Bailey's posture and his walking there. He's not real happy right now, and I can understand that. I mean, he's a little upset, and as I said, you take away the mistakes, and they play with this team. And we're going to take a timeout and come back and wrap this up. Back in moments on HBCU Sports. Churches, we believe that greatness begins with passion and commitment. We proudly support the students and communities of historically black colleges and universities. Churches. You know what? You've earned this. from Spalding, true to the game. Ty Miller and Tony McGee back here at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C., where there you see the final score in Norfolk State. Victorious over the Howard Bison, 49-12. Tony, your final thoughts here? Establish the run a little bit earlier this week and go out and run the ball a little better and eliminate your mistakes and you'll be all right. And the Bison fall to 1-7 on the season. Norfolk State improves to 3-6 and six next week. Howard takes on South Carolina State. Actually, that's a Thursday night game. And on Saturday, Morgan State will take on the Norfolk State Spartans. For Susan Stark, Tony McGee, and myself, Ty Miller, the final score again, it was, it was Howard losing to Norfolk State, 49-12. And I guess we got a couple more seconds here as the band plays on, Tony. Yeah, and I tell you, as I said, they got a short week, but at the same time, you can't just look at this. You try to look at the positive, take the positive out. We eliminate our mistakes, and we did not play as bad a game as the score indicated. But if you're Norfolk State, you played a good game with your coach Pete Adrian, right? You keep saying that. Yeah, I mean, I think they what their record is. I think what your record is, and, and that record is three and six, and they're three and six team. Well, it's easier to, I guess, also to teach during a win as opposed to a loss, too, right? Not necessarily. Most coaches like to find something wrong whether you win or lose. And I tell you what, Coach Bailey has a lot to fall uh, to find out wrong. But at the same time, he must address special teams. Cannot continue to give up yardage and give up plays as they have in the past this year, last year, and the years prior to that. Offensively, that quarterback needs to be able to stop looking and eyeballing his receiver because now every defensive back, every linebacker will just read his eyes. And as a team, they have to establish identity. When I say that, defensively, if Indoor Cooper go out, someone else has to make a play. You got to get some pass rush. You got to make some plays. Where is the interceptions? Where is the fumbles? Offensively, you got to say, are we going to run the ball? Or are we going to pass the ball? We got to establish, uh, will we have an equal? Uh, equal game plan where we run and pass the ball. And you mentioned Indoor Cooper. He played hurt but came back. So how did he do for himself so far as the next level and scouts are concerned? Good on one scene. He, sh he, he sh showed the scouts that I will play hurt. 
But at the same time, he was not nearly as effective as he was when he was not hurt. So therefore, you wonder what they would think about. But one thing they have to know, this guy is not averaging 13 tackles a game by not being a player. He is a player. So what he did, it was positive. He came in as a leader. He came in as a player. He came in injured, and he gave the effort. And for Coach Carey Bailey, you mentioned that, you know, it's not always the coach's fault. Sometimes the players just have to play, right? Play, coaches can only put players in the right position to be successful. It's up to the player to be successful. And I think what I see with this team right here is you have some players getting injured. The players that are on the bench that never expects to play are not prepared to play when they get in. Therefore, they're making mistakes. They're not, they're not doing what they need to do or doing as well as the players that were out there at first. So what I'm saying is preparation, which is whole squad, is what these players need to look at. I am one play away from going in there, and when I go in, I need to know what I'm doing and give a maximum effort. Did the Bison do any more to establish the identity today? Uh, they did in the beginning of the third quarter. I think they ran the ball well. I think that they really got these guys thinking about what they could do really at the end of the second half and into the third quarter. And lo and behold, both times, special teams really cost them the game. I mean, cost them that momentum. Right now, let's throw it down to Susan Stark on the sideline, standing by with Norfolk State head coach Pete Adrian. Susan. Now, 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 now. So, Coach, it looks like you had quite a good game today. Yeah, we finally played a complete game. You know, our offense played well. Our defense uh, created some turnovers and played pretty good. And then special teams came through with a couple scores. So, very happy about that. You also broke that losing streak. Uh, no question about that. You know, we've been a lot of frustration because we've had a chance to win four games in a row. We've lost the fourth quarter every time. So, it was nice going into the fourth quarter today with a big lead. Well, congratulations on your win. Tony Ty, back to you. Okay, Susan, and congratulations to Coach Pete Adrian breaking that five-game losing streak. Now let's take a look at our Navy player of the game, Tony. And that player would be, drum roll, please. Wait for the drum roll from the Norfolk State Marching Band, and we'll see that Navy player of the game. My guess is it has to be, well, it could be a couple of players. Could it be Dennis Brown? Yes, he managed the game very well. He made some plays running. And he also made some plays passing. Or it could be number 34, Cor Corin Hammond. And he did a very good job. Two interceptions, one for a touchdown. And what we said, he read the quarterback's eyes well. He also made a few tackles. But right here, that was the big momentum switcher of the game because Howard was starting to play better, get some momentum. He caught it, took it in for a touchdown, turned the game all the way around. And that's your Navy player of the game. Navy, accelerate your life. So, again, the final score here in Washington, D.C., the Howard Bison fall to the Norfolk State Spartans, 49-12. And for Susan Stark, Tony McGee, and myself, Ty Miller, and for HBCU Sports, so long again, you've been watching HBCU Sports. Score man goes in motion. That's Dario Walker. Brown looking, looking. Brown with a seam can run for the end zone and we'll have a Norfolk State touchdown. Okay. Touchdown, Norfolk State. And the Spartans go on top 6 0 with 2.28 left here in the first quarter. Without the leader in there and in, in the indoor Score man goes in motion. That's Dario Walker. Brown looking, looking. Brown with a seam can run for the end zone and we'll have a Norfolk State touchdown. Okay. Touchdown, Norfolk State. And the Spartans go on top 6 0 with 2.28 left here in the first quarter. Without the leader in there and in, in indoor coup. And goes in motion. That's Dario Walker. Brown looking, looking. Brown with a seam can run for the end zone. And we'll have a Norfolk State touchdown. Okay. Touch. No score. Man goes in motion. That's Dario Walker. 
Brown looking, looking. Brown with the seam can run for the end zone and will have a Norfolk State touchdown. AT. Here's a snap. It's down. Kick is up, and it is good. So we're 228 left in the first quarter. New score. Norfolk State 7. Howard nothing. We'll be back with more on HBCU Sports. AT. Here's a snap. It's down. Kick is up, and it is. Good. So with 228 left in the first quarter, new score. Norfolk State 7, Howard nothing. We'll be back with more on HBCU Sports. Third down and four, ball at the nine yard line for Norfolk State. Brown takes a snap. Brown throws a fade out there, and Jamar Johnson makes the catch in the end zone for a Spartan touchdown. That is that pattern that they worked on time and time. Third down and four, ball at the nine yard line for Norfolk State. Brown takes a snap. Brown throws a fade out there. And Jamar Johnson makes the catch in the end zone for a Spartan touchdown. That is that pattern that they worked on time and time. Nine yard line for Norfolk State. Brown takes a snap. Brown throws a fade out there. And Jamar Johnson makes the catch in the end zone for a Spartan touchdown. That is that pattern that they worked on. Threw the ball on top of him. And here's Costalot, kicks it up, and it is good. So a new score with 10 minutes and 33 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Norfolk State Spartans now lead the Howard Bison. Threw the ball on top of him. And here's Costalot, kicks it up, and it is good. So a new score with 10 minutes and 33 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Norfolk State Spartans now lead the Howard Bison. Safety off somewhere. First and 10 at the Norfolk State 40. Again, a quick pass picked off by Norfolk State. And running the other way for the end zone is Joshua August for a Norfolk State touchdown. 61-yard touchdown return of an interception from Floyd Hagler. I guarantee, I guarantee when you see this, and we safety off somewhere. First and 10 at the Norfolk State 40. Again, a quick pass picked off by Norfolk State. And running the other way for the end zone is Joshua August for a Norfolk State touchdown. 61-yard touchdown return of an interception from Floyd Hagler. I guarantee, I guarantee when you see this. And when First and 10 at the Norfolk State 40. Again, a quick pass picked off by Norfolk State. And running the other way for the end zone is Joshua August for a Norfolk State touchdown. 61-yard touchdown return. This is usual. Second down and three. And here again is a running play. And it's going to be Hedgeman. And Hedgeman will make it branch into the end zone for another Spartan score. D'Angelo Branch. This is usual. Second down and three. And here again is a running play. And it's going to be Hedgeman. And Hedgeman will make it branch into the end zone for another Spartan score. D'Angelo Brand. Usual. Second down and three. And here again is a running play. And it's going to be Hedgeman. And Hedgeman will make it branch into the end zone for another Spartan score. D'Angelo Branch. Second down and three. And here again is a running play. And it's going to be Hedgeman. And Hedgeman will make it branch into the end zone for another Spartan score. D'Angelo Branch. From Norfolk, Virginia, a redshirt sophomore slashes through the Bison defense to make it Norfolk State 27, Howard 0. And this will be the returner, taking it at the 16-yard line, up to the 20, 25, 30, straight through the teeth of the defense. Now down the sideline in a little foot race for the Norfolk State Spartans and an 84-yard touchdown for Dwight Fluker. And this will be the returner, taking it at the 16-yard line, up to the 20, 25, 30, straight through the teeth of the defense. Now down the sideline in a little foot race for the Norfolk State Spartans and an 84-yard touchdown for Dwight Fluker Berry. And it was no fluke. 18 yard line up to the 20, 25, 30, straight through the teeth of the defense. Now down the sideline in a little foot race for the Norfolk State Spartans and an 84-yard touchdown for Dwight Fluker Berry. And it was no fluke. <laughs> but I it was you. very, very for the Spartans. Yeah, and there you go. Special teams was as being the better team. Patrick and this wants it to Fluker Berry. Fluker Berry trying to get to the outside and can't get there because Jean Marie and number 35, 
Martin Porter make the tackle, and there's a fumble. And, well, he breaks away from the tackle. And this is going to be a Norfolk State touchdown. You cannot believe wow. that you will miss Dwight Booker Berry. He Ooh. looked to be down, but. As being the better team. Patrick Wilson wants it to Fluka Berry. Fluka Berry trying to get to the outside and can't get there because Jean Marie and number 35, Martin Porter, make the tackle. And there's a fumble. And well, he breaks away from the tackle. And this is going to be a Norfolk State touchdown. You cannot believe wow. that you will miss Dwight Fluka Berry. He Ooh. looked to be down, but. The action fake. Whitaker has a man open. Throws it out there for him. Has a wide open and a touchdown catch for the Howard Bison. Going to Brandon Sherman, number eight. 45 yards. The action fake. Whitaker has a man open. Throws it out there for him. Has a wide open and a touchdown catch for the Howard Bison. Going to Brandon Sherman, number eight. 45 yards. That's with Macro Rathbay. The action fake. Whitaker has a man open. Throws it out there for him. Has a wide open and a touchdown catch for the Howard Bison. Going to Brandon Sherman, number eight. 45 yards. Rushing and passing yards for this afternoon. We'll get back to that in a second. But here's a score or a run to the end zone, and that is D'Angelo Branch just really just forcing his will over the goal line and into the end zone to make it a 48 to 12 score for Norfolk State on top. And it's unfortunate people will look at this crushing and passing yards for this afternoon. We'll get back to that in a second. But here's a score or a run to the end zone and that is D'Angelo Branch just really just forcing his will over the goal line and into the end zone to make it a 48 to 12 score for Norfolk State on top. And it's unfortunate people will look at this this game being brought to you by Russell Athletics. Russell Athletics. Paradise Exit. The latest in fashion, music, dining, and more. Church's Chicken. Church's Chicken. Publix Food Store, where shopping is a pleasure. And by Navy. Good afternoon to you and welcome to Green Stadium here in Washington, D.C., where today the Howard Bison take on the Norfolk State Spartans. These are two teams having mediocre seasons, and by mediocre, I'm being nice because the Bison come in at 1-6, and six, while the Spartans are 2-6 and six on the year. My name is Ty Miller, joined by Tony McGee, and Tony will start with the Norfolk State Spartans, a team that is 2-6, and six, but they could easily be 6-2, and two, and that's primarily because of their quarterback, Dennis Brown. Yes, Dennis Brown is a very versatile quarterback. Not only does he pass well with over 1,000 yards, he has almost 300 yards rushing. Therefore, Howard will have to really stop him from passing first and run second. The real bad news for Norfolk State is on their defense, where their free safety Terrell Whitehead makes most of their tackles. Whenever you have a free safety making most of your tackles, that means your defensive line, as well as your linebackers, they're not doing the job. Therefore, they need that upfront pressure and they need better play. Now let's talk about the one and six Howard Bison, a team that really doesn't know who they are right now. Yes, early in the season, they were running the ball a little bit better. Now they've gone to the passing game and that's not successful. They need to establish right now, are we running the ball? Or are we going to pass the ball? And their bright spot too has been on defense where Indoor Cooper continues to impress. Indoor Cooper averaging over 13 tackles a game. This guy can go to the next level, but he needs help from his teammates. Howard and Norfolk State, the Bison on a three game losing streak while the Spartans are on a five game losing streak. Spartans and Bison coming up on HBCU Sports. Back to you. All right, thank you, Susan. And the Bison start first and 10 of their four-yard line. This is Carlos Whitaker on the carry, and Whitaker struggles over the five to about the eight-yard line. And you just heard Susan say the coach can't. Tony Ty, back to you. All right, thank you, Susan. And the Bison start first and 10 of their four-yard line. This is Carlos Whitaker on the carry, and Whitaker struggles over the five to about the eight-yard line. And you just heard Susan say the coach can't. First down carry. And again, here's Whitaker on the carry. Whitaker with the 10 to about the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. And that's the first down for the Bison. And you know, Whitaker came into this game with 298 yards rushing. First down carry. And again, here's Whitaker on the carry. Whitaker with the 10 to about the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. 
and that's a first down for the Bison. And you know, Whitaker came into this game with 298 yards rushing. They can take that and go to the yard with it. First and 10 Bison. Here's Carlos Whitaker on the carry, and Whitaker not going too far as number one, Dennis Marsh and company. They can take that and go to the yard with it. First and 10 Bison. Here's Carlos Whitaker on the carry, and Whitaker not going too far as number one, Dennis Marsh and company. 18 yard pass and catch. First down for the Bison at the 45. Hager in the middle has it picked off. Picked off by number 34, who has one reception for a touchdown. That is Corwin Hammond, his second interception this afternoon. Okay, let's take a look at it. Number 34. 18 yard pass and catch. First down for the Bison at the 45. Hager in the middle has it picked off. Picked off by number 34, who has one reception for a touchdown. That is Corwin Hammond, his second interception this afternoon. Okay, let's take a look at it. Number 34. That's Dario Walker. Brown looking, looking. Brown with a seam can run for the end zone and will have a Norfolk State touchdown. Okay. Touchdown, Norfolk State. And the Spartans go on top 6 0 with 228 left here in the first quarter. Without the leader in there and, and then Dor Brown takes a snap. Brown throws a fade out there. And Jamar Johnson makes the catch in the end zone for a Spartan touchdown. That is that pattern that they worked on. First and 10 at the Norfolk State 40. Again, a quick pass picked off by Norfolk State. And running the other way for the end zone is Joshua August for a Norfolk State touchdown. 61-yard touchdown return of an interception from Floyd Hagler. I guarantee, I guarantee when you see this. And we've been down in three. And here, again, is a running play. And it's going to be Hedgeman. And Hedgeman make it branch into the end zone for another Spartan score. D'Angelo Brand returner taking it at the 16-yard line up to the 20, 25, 30, straight through the teeth of the defense. Now down the sideline in a little foot race for the Norfolk State Spartans and an 84-yard touchdown for Dwight Fluker. <laughs> Six left before halftime. Play action fake. No, another handoff. This is going to be Whitaker. Whitaker's going to be stopped, but not before he gets down inside the 45 to about the 43 yard line. Okay. But the 44 of Norfolk State. Another run. Whitaker running to his right, cuts it back in the middle, gets to your, near and gets another first down for the Bison. Eight yard line. Hagler shotgun formation. Back to pass. Screen play. Whitaker has it midfield into Norfolk State territory down to the 40, 35 30, down to the 20. Three-yard line for a Bison first down. Takes a snap and hands off to McElrath Bay down to the 20. Inside the 10-5, touchdown, Howard Bison. As I told you, you look at the body label. We can look at those gold and green, green bay-looking uniforms they got out there. You start to see the heads drop. You start to see the men being. 18-yard pass and catch first down for the Bison at the 45. Hager in the middle has it picked off. Picked off by number 34, who has one reception for a touchdown. That is Corwin Hammond, his second interception this afternoon. Okay, let's take a look at it. Number 34, what safety off somebody? First and 10 at the Norfolk State 40. Again, a quick pass picked off by Norfolk State. And running the other way for the end zone is Joshua August for a Norfolk State touchdown. 61-yard touchdown return of an interception from Floyd Hagler. I guarantee, I guarantee when you see this. And when what lies within Howard is quite simply a promise, a promise that every son, every daughter of this institution will find within its halls a unique and fulfilling educational experience, the Howard Experience. Here, we educate tomorrow's leaders today with solid preparation to meet the demands of an ever-evolving global society. Howard University offers students more than 120 areas of study, leading to undergraduate, graduate, and professional degrees. The Howard Experience fosters creativity and allows students to engage in self-exploration through sports, music, dance, and debate. A journey towards excellence in leadership for America and the global community. This is the Howard Experience.
Norfolk State University was founded in 1935 in the midst of the Great Depression. With humble beginnings, NSU began to fulfill the dream of students seeking a college education. Today, more than 6,100 students attend NSU majoring in subjects ranging from accounting to zoology. To meet the demands of the future, NSU is positioning itself to become a science and technology powerhouse by building an applied research facility. Visit the Norfolk State University website at www.nsu.edu for more information.